Hello, Augie. Hello. Hello, Eddie. Hello and welcome back to Art Therapy with Jen. Today I'm doing a art journal page in a book. I'm going to be using magazine, um, some inks, a little bit of paint, and just all kinds of stuff. And to start off with, I'm using the image of this girl. I thought she would be perfect for this page. I have had her for a hot minute. She came out of a W magazine at least two years ago I think it some fall season either last year the year before the year before that and I've held on to her for a long time she's been in my confession bin that I confess I have not put these up uh, pages back where they need to go <laughs> Ben, if you remember my last video and I thought she would just be perfect I just I love the way she fits on this page and this is a new book I'm working in, so we're decluttering in the house again because we're, you know, renovating it room by room. And we had this big bookcase in my dining room. Y'all saw the pile of books in the beginning of the video that I took off of that bookcase. And we're going through decluttering everything. And this was one of my books that was in there, and I thought it would make a perfect journal. It's kind of another food book. <laughs> Y'all remember the days when we all used to have to use cookbooks? Um, and I just thought it was great. It's real hefty, has a good hard cover to it. Just great. So, got another journal. I know, I know. I may have a hundred journals at one point. That'll be all right. <laughs> and then I had this image of this uh, real tall building in the bin too, and I thought it would work really really well with her because I don't know why maybe it's because I'm in the boonies and stuff but buildings like that always read futuristic almost sci-fi to me because buildings like that are nowhere near where I live I just don't see them I haven't seen them since I lived in a big city so it's just not like I know it's just some building in Seattle that they see every day but to me it, I'm coming from a different frame of reference you know and now, since I let those uh, images dry, all the glue beneath them, I'm taking some gesso, and I'm going over and priming that exposed part of the book page. This isn't a heavy gesso, so the um, words are still going to show through, because I want to work with that. I think that's one uh, fun way you can work with an altered book, is to have the book words work for you, if you know what I mean. And y'all know, I'm going to get my fingers in there. I always start with the brush and I end up just finger painting. I just have a lot more dexterity um, with my fingers. And I like the um, more organic um, finish it gives it instead of my, this brush. And <laughs> I know this isn't the best brush. I don't want to use a really good brush to do gesso with. So <laughs> it's just a random apple barrel um, acrylic brush. But you know, my fingers, I got 10 of them. Let, let's put them to work. I'm just going around and smoking out the edges around the um, magazine page. I want the ripped edges to still show through, but I want it to... Um, tie in with the book page as well you can see there I was um, checking out because these book pages while they're thick I can already tell they're not gonna be able to hold anything heavy-duty or with a lot of moisture so that's another reason the gesso is good because it'll prime the page for a bit so now the gesso's dried about an hour later and I wanted to add some color without adding too much moisture so I have these distressed oxide like they're not really ink pads. They're more like pigment pads. I got it on the hype back when there was a huge sale at Blitzy one um, Black Friday. And I bought quite a few of these and they've sat on my shelf. Because <laughs> y'all know I tend to just reach for the reach for the cheap and junker stuff. But we're going we're gonna to use these too. And I wanted to bring in the blue but a more like in your face blue from the image with that um, building there 
and I just put the pad on there and then took a makeup sponge I didn't wet it or nothing dry dollar store makeup sponge and smushed it around and now I wanted to bring in a warm element from her picture playing off her shirt there so I had this brick red and I'm using the smaller side of the makeup sponge and just making some wisp on there to bring it together and I thought it played really well with that for the background and kind of tied them together a bit. And I got to remember to take these pigments out. Like I said, I bought these. I got in on all that hype. Y'all know, you see um, products come out and everybody's using them. And I was like, I want to use them too. So I need to actually use them. So I'll incorporate them with my, my free and found stuff, right? And I'm just going around and further pushing that out because these... Um, oxides they are reactive to moisture um i don't know if they ever actually drive to archival but anyway whole nother story whole nother day and now i want to add even more stuff so i'm going to do a spray pigment on there and i took some junk mail and covered up my girl in my building so that the spray didn't get on them and this is just a black uh dilutions spray ink and I'm trying, I wanted to not get it so close, but I was trying not to get it all over my desk. <laughs> um, I probably should have put something down in hindsight, but we went with it. And it was a little more opaque than what I wanted, so I just took a paper towel and I was blotting it up, y'all. Just blotting it up. And it worked just fine. It gave it this um, gray, misty a grungy goodness I like I love those pigment sprays I just hate how <laughs> messy they are that's another thing I got on the the train with and I bought a bunch of those I'm just continuing to try to get as much of that moisture up as I can and that's the effect I'm left with there so now I wanted to play off her like the golds in her image so she has this gold belt buckle she has this golden um, leopard print so I had this gold ink and I tried to get high enough up to where I could drop it in its splatter um, but this ink was just way too thick and um, I could not get high enough up I was like three or four feet off of my work surface but that's okay because I actually like this um, effect it gives it's almost like orbs and I wanted the ink to run down quite a little bit. So it's not just these like buttons. Like I literally put brads <laughs> on the page. And I'm going back through with my super high tech uh, paper towel. Just to further um, change those shapes. And get some of that off of the page. So again it's not like just a raised brass button that I've added on. And I really like that because it brightened up the page and those really come at you and they added kind of a shiny magical element that I was really digging. And I just felt like I needed a line right there above her. I don't know why. I just listen to my brain and I go with it. And I raised the book up so that the ink would run down more. And I got my paper towel back out of the trash can just so I could blot that as well now before I leave that ink to dry we're gonna play around with some more ink so you'll see me here I'm gonna take a old nail art brush if y'all remember me from my other channel over five years ago when I used to do a lot of nail art videos kudos for you today <laughs> but from that I have all these little awesome detail brushes that work great for art journaling as well and I'm just taking some black ink and just making a vine, tree branch, calligraphy, wispy goodness going on on the page. I don't know. It felt like it needed something. So I added it. Y'all would never know. I used to do a lot of nail art tutorials and things. Uh, by the way, my nails look now. My jobs killed my nails. It's one reason I had to quit. But I used to be um, a nail polish junkie back in the day. And just a tangent here while I'm putting my little wispy, wispy do's on there. Have y'all ever tried to use nail polish in an art journal page? So when I first started art journaling, I did. Because <laughs> I had all this um, nail polish left over from when I did nail polish reviews and tutorials and stuff. I still have quite a bit. And um, it'll work if, you, if you're just doing like little dots and stuff. But if you're putting any type of 
I mean, I still wouldn't do it. I've learned um, over time, it will actually break your page down. So just FYI, and it'll get really sticky. And uh, I don't know if it's like because it's got polyurethane in it or what, but FYI, no nail polish on the art journal page. <laughs> but here's what it looks like so far. You know, now that I'm looking at it in hindsight, those wisps kind of go with her hair. She has that curly hair, so cool. So that's what it's looking like. Really digging it, having fun. So now I'm going to take some just white acrylic apple barrel paint. Um, Walmart sells apple barrel. I think Hobby Lobby sells what? Folk Art Americana. Just 50 cent bottle of paint. And I'm just using my finger to put it on and I'm trying to work pretty fast to get it before it dries. Um, this is a matte paint so it dries very fast and I want it to um, have a little bit of blending um, as well as um, not being so just opaque like I put a big old blob of paint on there. So I'm playing around with it. This is kind of the effect y'all have seen me do in my collage pages with a Posca pen where I put a whole bunch down and smush it around. So I wanted to try it with this cheaper paint. is a cheaper option and I really like the way it's working. And a lot of those elements I have on the page already are moisture reactive. So when I'm putting that white down and I'm really smushing it with my finger, little bits of um, those colors are getting mixed in with this white as it dries. So I like the fact that I'm not getting a pure white. Some of that black ink's getting in there. Um, I, I just, I dig it. It gives it like a smoky effect and I didn't want it completely opaque or symmetrical or you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe I don't know what I mean, but yeah. And there was this little image I had intended to use since the beginning, but the way the page went, it just didn't fit. And because I never met a bit of white space that I couldn't cover, I wanted to add another element. So I had this uh, stamp that was in my stash. It's got like chains and a skull and all this stuff. And I wanted to just add little, a little hint of it around there. And I had my black ink pad here, y'all. And this was like trying to squeeze blood out of a rock. I am telling you. This thing, I couldn't get anything out of it. So you'll see me over there. I take a, a makeup pad and try to squish ink out um, just to get on the uh, stamp. I'm trying to rub the stamp on top of it. I am just, you'll see me here in a minute. I just take the whole daggone ink sponge out and <laughs> set it on there. Yeah, there I go. <laughs> we were just trying to squeeze any bit of that ink up out of there. So, because I really wanted it to be black ink. I did that whole thing. Uh, like with these supplies y'all seeing, I would see people use these things. And I want to run out and buy them. So, I bought all these different colors of inks and things as well. And to be honest, I could have just got away with black ink. But you see, I was able to squeeze a little bit out of that stamp. So, there's a little bit of texture can't really make out what it is but it's something <laughs> and now that that white paints com completely dried I'm gonna go in with my Posca pen and write my words down so this this journal so far we're deciding to write the words and to me this building represents um, the system if you will or um, conformity um, order imposed order really and this girl represents the antithesis of that, you know, creativity, originality, etc., and so forth. And so what came to my mind as I was doing this page after 2 o'clock in the morning was they try to force me in a box. They are going to be really disappointed. So I thought that's neat and it really jumps off those, um, that white paint there. So that worked out really well. And like I told y'all... I have never met a bit of white space that I didn't want to add something to. So I'm taking my gel pen, my black gel pen, and I'm just underlining all the words. I'm just very roughly um, going back and forth just to add more elements. And then I'm going to add some flourishes because, like I said, you know, that, that white space, it keeps me up at night. I must add a thing. <laughs> at least on most of my pages anyway. 
<laughs> I keep thinking that because I had someone message me one time and like, you ever heard of white space? And I'm like, no, blaspheme. <laughs> oh, just kidding. And then I signed my name down here and then September 1st. So we brought in September in a fun, arty way. And then I broke my rule because usually when I sign my name, I'm done. But y'all, I had to put some more stuff down. So I had my flare pen sitting on my desk here so I decided to add some more elements and I felt like there needed to be like I'm doing parallel lines there like this building is so just stick straight tall and everything that I just wanted to add some lines to play off that visually and <laughs> you see me there I'm just a fussing with that page I love it <laughs> And then I just sat there and I got to thinking, I'm like, this is not grammatically correct. So I added an if. So if they try to force me in a box, they're going to be really disappointed. But it gets better, y'all. This is late night stuff. And then I decided to add an and over there because I think in my mind, I was thinking they try to force me in a box and they are going to be really disappointed. But I had already added the if. So the if and the and don't make sense together. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Grammar people, you get me. So you'll see me here. I'll come to a realization that like, wait a minute. <laughs> There's my little hand there. I put it down. Like that don't make sense. So what I decided to do was take that ampersand and start adding tendrils off of it. And I'm like, we're going to make this a design. So that uh, nobody has to know that this was an ampersand. Except for, you know, I just I just let the cat out of the bag and I told y'all. So I started just um, making all these things so it looks like, um, I don't know, some type of rope, barbed wire, just vines, goodness. And I started adding it on other parts of the page so it looks like. It was a design that I tried to do. So we'll just call that a happy accident. Um, just like, you know, our patron Saint Bob Ross says. <laughs> oh gosh, sorry guys, I'm laughing. I don't know if y'all can hear it. My cat is howling. Like, I'm in here trying to talk to y'all. And it's it must be driving him crazy. So if y'all hear this sound that sounds like some pregnant cat in heat in the middle of the road hollering for other cats, then <laughs> do not be alarmed. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But I actually really like the element that added. So it really was a happy accident. Um, it was something the page needed, I feel like. And here is what the final page looks like. I had so much fun with this one. I think this girl is just fierce. I love her. She's awesome. So thank you all so much for uh, spending another art journal page with me. Hope you all are having a fabulous day. And I will see you all next week with another art video. Bye, guys.